All right. Well, welcome everyone to our virtual outdoor photography panel. My name is Hillary Sanders. I'm the communications and engagement manager here at Washington Wild. Uh, and before we dive into our panel today, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the land that we are on. And obviously we're all coming from very different places. Um, so wherever you are right now, um, I would like to invite you to learn more about uh, the original people of where you are. Um, for example, I am currently living and working on the traditional lands of the Snohomish people. And I'm really trying to learn more about them because the museum and the little museum in my town doesn't mention them once and it can be you can kind of start to see how erasure happens and um, so if you're interested in learning more about um, the land that you live and work and and play on there's this website that i'll drop in the chat um, native-land.ca where you can it's not meant to be an exact representation of, of um, historical borders, but it is a good resource to just kind of start learning more. Um, and so thank you for, um, for just kind of thinking through that um, with me. Um, and for those who don't know us, um, for those do, that don't know Washington Wild, uh, we are a statewide organization that is working to protect and restore wild lands and waters. Um, we work with broad coalitions, so um, not only recreationists and um, conservationists, but um, brewers and business owners and um, elected officials and tribes and other groups all across our state. Um, and so we have been working to preserve those most vital wilderness areas since 1979. Um, and since then, we've helped to permanently protect over 3 million acres of wilderness. Um, and actually, just within the last few days, for folks who could use some good news, um, the Wild Olympics uh, Wilderness and Wild and Scenic Rivers Act passed in the House um, as part of the National um, Defense Authorization Act, um, as well as the Great American Outdoors Act passed in the House as well, um, which will permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Act. So there's a lot of trails and a lot of really beautiful spots in the state of Washington that we can attribute to that Land and Water Conservation Fund. So some really great news there, and we're certainly proud to be a part of some of those big wins. Um, so as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, photography can be really important actually in helping us tell the story of our wild places, of our public lands here in Washington. And so we wanted to host this panel as a way to kind of open up the discussion a little bit more um, and also hear from some really awesome local photographers who have been a part of our annual photo contest in the past. And so if folks aren't already familiar with our photo contest, it's going on now through August 14th. Um, and I'll drop the link to the full details here in the chat. Um, so you can learn more about what categories we have going on. We also have a youth division, um, so you can uh, learn more there. And um, before we get to our panelists and, and let them introduce themselves, I see that we have Susie from Ascent Outdoors on the call, so I would like to welcome them to talk a little bit more about the latest updates from their Ballard store and how they are supporting our photo contest this year, as well as our conservation work in general. So Susie, I will pass it off to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having this uh, little panel. I'll start by showing our little gifts that we're going to be donating to the competition. We've got some cool Ascent Outdoor branded water bottles and a couple gift cards. And I think there's, if correct me, either four or six. I couldn't remember how many we decided. But um, each winner will get a water bottle and a gift card. And I think we're doing 50 or 75 um, 
between those. So some great options. Yeah, just to run through, uh, we're now open seven days a week um, with all of the guidelines happening. Um, Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7, and then Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6. Um, order online and pick up in store has been a very popular option. Um, we're also limiting the amount of shoppers in the store at the time, so it's not overcrowded. Um, and then, of course, we're doing free shipping over $100, and that usually takes about uh, two days. So for people that maybe aren't local to Seattle, there's always that option for shipping. Um, but yeah, just our partnership with Washington Wild has gone on for a couple of years now. We've done some events in the past, bingo nights and fundraisers for them, but obviously it's very important that they're working to protect public lands. And um, one being in Seattle, we are very honed into very important policies and the social injustices that happen. That's kind of the quote of our shop. We're very supportive of things that happen socially in the city. And of course, getting behind protecting public lands is very important. Um, yeah, and also Washington Wild is a great organization, so we love partnering with them. Um, and then Hillary just asked me briefly to talk about my connection to photo and video. Uh, that's kind of what got me my job here at Ascent Outdoors. I'm the marketing manager here, so my job sometimes just is me behind a computer, but it's also really great when I get to go out and do product shoots or take pictures of new things that are coming in the shop, um, and that's being outdoors is what got me into photography in the first place, just hiking and traveling and all that. So uh, gave me an excuse to carry a very heavy camera in my pack that still to this day, I was sacrificing food just to have my camera out there. So probably not the smartest idea, but um, you know, I'm sure a lot of photographers can relate to that. But yeah, we would love to have you guys come down and check out our shop if you haven't. We're uh, partially used but mostly outdoor retailer now but we have a huge use section so we buy back gear um, we're not currently buying back gear yet just trying to figure out the whole COVID scenario but um, we do have a very large section uh, four seasons of skis and trail runners and apparel um, that you can sell to us and we'll give you store credit and then you can come and shop for new and used gear so that's a little bit about Ascent Outdoors. And if I missed anything, Hillary, let me know. I'll add it. But um, yeah, thanks for letting us be a part of this. Yeah, great. Thanks so much for uh, supporting the photo contest as well. So if you're interested in kind of seeing the full list of uh, the prizes that we have, including the ones from Ascent Outdoors, you can go to that uh, Washington Wild photo contest link, and that's where our full details are. Um, so thanks so much for that. Um, and certainly, as you're getting out and, and doing photography this summer, um, Ascent Outdoors is a great place to go. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce our panelists. So one of them hasn't been able to join us yet, but we have Evgeny Vasnev, as well as Andy Porter and Elisa Rogers joining us, all local photographers who are really supporting our photo contest um, process right now as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let each of them introduce themselves. So if we want to go ahead and start with Andy. I think you're muted. <laughs> there you there go. we go. So I'm Andy Porter. I live in Cedro Woolley and um, I'm a photographer mostly for Northwestern Washington and the North Cascades. So I've been um, you know, sending pictures to Washington Wild for a while to see if I could help support their efforts. And I'm always proud to be, see my pictures there in print or on the website somewhere. So anyway, that's, that's what I'm doing. Hi. Great. You have Genny? Hi, my name is Evgeny and originally I'm from Russia, but right now I'm living in Seattle and yes, I'm kind of like a local photographer, but at the same time I take pictures around the whole world and mostly I take pictures like landscape pictures or sometimes extreme sports like climbing or snowboarding and so on. Great. Where are you? Um, right now I'm in Winthrop. Oh, cool. Yeah, so basically. Like, sweet. Yeah, we decided like to take like a short trip, like 
40 days. So yeah, cool. I'm basically like outdoors, you know. <laughs> nice, it looks sunny. <laughs> All right, and Elisa? Hi, I'm Elisa Rogers. Um, I'm actually an editor by day and, you know, on my off time, I like to go out and hike and I always take my camera with me. And I've been doing that since 1998. Um, I started just when I started traveling outside the U.S. for the first time. I started like getting really interested in outdoor photography just by virtue of going to Europe and seeing all these great historical items in the landscape, buildings and stone circles and things like that. And here in the States, um, especially in Washington, we have this wonderful natural landscape, wilderness landscape. So that's where my focus shifted. And yeah, we have such a wonderland of wonderful places to go on the trails. And I've been living here for 10 years. I'm from Ohio originally, moved to Seattle 10 years ago, and then moved to Kingston two years after that. So I live in a little house in the woods. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we still, I don't think we've repeated many hikes yet. We've been on hundreds of hikes. That's how great Washington trails are. <laughs> They're just everywhere. So yeah. Awesome. Well, it's so great to finally meet all of you because I don't know if, if folks follow us watching Wild on social media, you'll probably see a lot of these folks' photos shared uh, because we do use them to talk about these places that we're working to preserve and protect. Um, so definitely go and, and check out our socials um, if you haven't yet. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the panelist portion. Um, so I have a couple questions that I'll kind of just use to get us going. And then if folks in the audience have questions for any of the panelists, feel free to put those in the chat at any time. Um, and I'll, I'll be watching that and we can have some audience questions at the end. Um, but the first question that I have, um, and some of you already kind of touched on this, is what first got you interested in outdoor photography? Yeah, I guess I sort of answered that already. <laughs> Oops. So for me, like uh, when I was oh, like 19, so I fell in love in mountains. So I spent a lot of time like outdoors and I just wanted to show the beauty to my family, to my friends. So um, at that point of time, we didn't have things like smartphones or digital cameras. So I bought a like film camera and I could spend two, three weeks, just a few rolls outside. And it was like really nice time because you can take a picture, like several pictures and you have no idea how it looks like. And when you come back, you can develop that film and you can see the picture. And probably like, I think I really like it and because it taught me like think about the picture not like on the screen but in my mind so I could imagine like how it will look like so and it gave me some imagination I believe so yeah cool I am um, <clears throat> when I was um, in the late 70s me and my friends uh, learned about the Pacific Crest Trail we learned lived back in Pennsylvania and we decided to hitchhike out and hike Oregon on the trail. So um, I had never been there. I decided I needed a camera. And so I borrowed my friend's Nikromat, old film Nikromat camera, and we hitchhiked out and met at Cascade Locks and hiked south. And um, it was um, like you just said about taking the pictures with film. You know, you don't get to see how it comes out for a while, which is like funny if you try to describe that to young people. But uh, yeah, it's, um, that's what first got me interested was outdoor travel. And the challenge of, uh, you know, you see the beauty of things and then, you know, it's just the challenge of trying to capture it on film is, is, is not as easy as it looks, right? So that's what got me interested in it. Awesome. And so there's probably folks on the call that have, you know, varied experience with outdoor photography or photography in general, myself included. Um, so what would be, what would you say that any outdoor photographer would need to know when they are first starting out? Uh, I think, I mean, I would give some advice, like 
to fall in love what we are doing because outdoor photography and landscape photography it's this for me it's less about the final result it's less about the picture it's more it's about the journey like how you come to the spot how you find that spot what they're doing there and how you enjoy that so i think kind of like enjoy the path before you will take the picture because i said before kind of like if you want to take a picture of like beautiful sunrise or sunset and to take time you hike up there you are trying to find the perfect spot so you have to enjoy what i'm doing because the picture like finally you can take the picture and it couldn't be like a really nice picture but you need to enjoy what i'm doing because it always will be with you I'm going to get really practical. That was beautiful, but <laughs> I'm like, what can I say? <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, before you go, make sure you're respecting the space, too. It's really important to, first of all, be safe, because no photo is worth crawling along a cliff and risking your life falling down, you know, the side of a mountain. And also respect the wildlife. Um, don't try to get too close to wildlife to get a better photo. It's bad for them. It's bad for you, too. So yeah, learn the minimum safe distances for each type of animal. And just as a general rule of thumb, anytime you're altering an animal's behavior, that means you're disturbing it. So something to keep in mind uh, as you go. And uh, yeah, also try to avoid going off trail to take photos. I know Washington Trails Association is like, you know, this is, these are their three, <laughs> three big ones uh, when it comes to staying mindful and respectful on the trails and being a photographer doesn't give you the right to just trample all over those beautiful wildflower meadows you know stay on trail get the best photo you can from the trail and yeah stay safe too all right i've done my little practical spiel back to the inspirational <laughs> speeches i would say the the main thing I would say to somebody starting out is just that it's, it's not about the equipment. Um, I see people get a lot of attention on how they need to have all this stuff, you know, the lenses, the camera bodies, oh my God, right? It's endless. And um, it's not about that. You know, when I started out, I had just an entry level camera and lens and I was taking pictures that were in magazines. It's just really about getting out there. It's just about getting to a good spot. And it's also about being patient. You know, it's not like every time you go somewhere, you get perfect pictures. Sometimes the weather's horrible. Sometimes the bugs eat you alive. Sometimes other unfortunate things come your way. And so you just got to be cool, you know, get out there and take a ton of pictures. And then as you go, you know, you sort of develop your own style and your own like feeling for it. And um, then you sort of know really what equipment you need, right? Or what you want. <clears throat> And you really won't know that until you've done it for a while, right? So before you invest in anything pricey, I'd say, like, do it for a bit and then, you know, see kind of like what you're grooving on and what you like and, and what you're comfortable with. Um, for me now, I just use wide angle lenses almost all the time, but everybody's different. You know, people use different things. It took me 10 years to get to the point where, like, I know that's what I'm doing, right? So that's what I would say uh, somebody starting out. It's not about the equipment. You don't need pricey stuff to get great pictures and um, just get out there. And before you go, make sure you have everything you need. Do a check every single time because it's the worst to, you know, hike eight miles, get up to that beautiful mountain pass, take your camera out, turn it on, and then get that little notification that there's no memory card or change the battery. So yeah, make sure you have everything you need before you go every time. And probably like take warm clothing, like jacket or something like that. So yeah, sometimes like, especially like in the evening, it could be warm. I mean, like I'm talking about the local nature and as the sun comes down, it could be cold. So be sure you're prepared for yourself again for the weather yeah 10 essentials absolutely awesome all really good reminders thank you 
Um, so I know I've seen photos from each of you and I'm going to throw up some photos here on the screen in a minute for our audience. Um, but I know you all have gotten some really amazing shots. And so I have this kind of, um, I don't know, uh, kind of interesting question for you, but uh, do you feel like you find the shots, like the perfect shot of, you know, a, a, of wildlife or of wildflowers or something like that? Do you find the shot or does it find you? I think for me it's kind of like both. Uh, some pictures I plant a lot, so like I explore the place, I like scout it like for a really nice spot and like I Google all that stuff. But sometimes just I think it's some kind of like luck because uh, the weather could be, I mean, you can spend a lot of time trying to pl plan the perfect photo and you come and weather just like boom, it's like nothing. So it's fine, so, but sometimes you just like, you see the picture, you see the shot and you just take it. So I think it's sometimes like a combination of be prepared and at the same time, some, some luck. Um, for me, I think I, I generally think about, you know, like some idea of what I'm going for, like, uh, you know, you go to um, Heather Pass like in October for the larch and so, you know, you go to some other place for the wildflowers. So, you know, you have a general idea of what you're, you're hoping to get, but, um, you know, then when you're actually shooting this the thing, you know, and you're behind the camera and you're, yeah, it just sort of comes to you, right, what the composition is and what the right uh, positioning is for things and so forth. And so it's kind of both, I'd say definitely. Um, and sometimes, you know, I just tool around and hope to get lucky, right? So in which case that's fun. But, um, you know, more often than not, I'm sort of thinking a bit about what I'm hoping to get. And then, uh, yeah, then you just kind of go and let the, the magic or the non-magic happen, right? Depending upon the sky and the clouds and the weather and all that, right? Yeah, you can definitely increase your odds of getting great pictures if you go to a place where you know there's going to be, you know, amazing views and mountain goats everywhere. And if you go up there, like Sahali Arm, for example, we went backpacking up there last summer and camped at the foot of Sahali Glacier and spent the night, woke up early to get the sunrise over all the layers of mountains. That was amazing. And oh yeah, wouldn't you know it, the mountain goat families are trekking through in the morning and wow. yeah, I was ready with my camera, but awesome. yeah. When you go to the places where the odds are good of great things happening, yeah, your your chances are much better. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's definitely, it sounds like luck is a part of it. <laughs> um, so the next question is for each of you to describe one of your most memorable photos and you each sent me one, so whoever wants to go first, I can throw your photo up on the screen here. I can go. Okay. Let's see. Do my screen share. All right, did I get the right one up there? Oh, dude. Yep. That's mine. So I think like speaking of the previous question, it's kind of like a combination of some luck and some preparation. So um, when we hiked the enchantments, so it was like uh, the second night. So we came to the core zone and like immediately, like when we, when we were trying to find spots for camping. So I found that like really nice flat boulder and I decided, okay, like no matter what, like I'm going to spend a night there like it's just so cool like doesn't matter like if I will take a picture or not I just I just want to spend a night there so uh, I put my tent there and when the night came so basically I was kind of like alone because um, all my friends were sleeping so and and the Milky Way just came and because before like in the evening it was pretty cloudy and you can see on the left side 
the clouds uh, clam coming out. So, and it was a luck. I mean, like it was a luck for me because uh, I didn't expect that. So I started to take some pictures and um, I was struggling with uh, setting some light inside the tent because sometimes it was too bright, sometimes it was too dark. So, and as I said before, I was alone. So, and my camera probably it was, I don't know, maybe like 40 feet from the uh, boulder. So I spent a lot of time just, just running between the tent and my camera and back and forth, back and forth, because I wanted to get some cozy light inside the tent. I want to be sure the white side on the right side of the tent is not too, too bright. And at the same time, the orange side of the tent is not too dark. So it took some time, but eventually I got this shot. And for me, I think it's it's less about, I mean, about the picture, it's more about the experience because this photo is not staged. So I didn't put the tent just for the photo. I like I really spent that night there, even like it was pretty windy. It was one of the best nights. I mean like outdoor nights in my life and the picture you can see I mean it's pretty cool I'm gonna be honest awesome unbelievable picture thank you yeah that is a great shot I don't know if if anyone's familiar with Nikki Frumkin's art um she does paintings and it actually that reminds me of of some of the paintings that she does and Nikki's a, a great um partner of Washington Wild so thanks so much for sharing that that photo um, the that night ones are, are always pretty breathtaking. Wow. <laughs> All right. Who should I pull up next? I'll go. All right. Next. So this is, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, where is this? <laughs> it's, um, I believe it's Warrior Peak in the Olympics near Mount Constance. And this was on the second day of a three-day backpacking trip. We hiked the uh, Tubal Cane Trail and camped at, I think it's Elk Lake. And then the next day hiked up to Marmot Pass. And then we went over Marmot Pass. And then, yeah, made our way towards the Charlia Lakes. And this was right around where we stopped. And yeah, it was an amazing viewpoint in all directions. And uh, I love sort of the, I don't know, it's sort of contradictory in a way because it, it gives you a little bit of a tunnel effect with all of the curved layers of the mountain on either side leading into the distance, but it also gives this sense of great space. Um, and I like, I like this one. This one actually got third place in the Washington Wild Photo Contest um, in 2016, I think. And yeah, so I thought, okay, well, you guys like this one. This is the one I'll send you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it actually does like come close to capturing that hugeness of space that we felt up there. It felt like the top of the world. Um, and this photo was actually taken pretty quickly because they're right behind us at the time, coming down the other mountainside was a 300 pound mountain goat. And <laughs> he was moving slowly but surely, and we didn't want to be in his way. When he came down towards us, he just kept coming closer and closer, and that was getting a little too close for comfort. So we made our way back down the mountain pretty quickly, but in the few moments we were up here, um, I was able to, to take some great photos. So here's one of them, right in the heart of the Olympics. Beautiful. Awesome, yeah, it definitely looks like you're on the edge of a cliff there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this rock on the right was where a lot of people were like stopping to have their snack before heading back down. I think that might be why the mountain goat was there, actually. We theorized that because he would come by and like pick up the crumbs afterwards, uh, unfortunately. He's not after the crumbs. <laughs> we were just hoping he wasn't after us at the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that. 
And Andy, I'll pull up yours. All right, so that uh, structure there, that's the Winchester Mountain Fire Lookout atop Winchester Mountain. And uh, sometimes you just get lucky, right? So um, <clears throat> the green glow on the horizon is the aura borealis. So I actually was there at the lookout that night um, with clients. I brought two clients up for a um, night sky photo shoot. And we were lucky enough to get to the light um, lookout and we stayed the night there by ourselves. And uh, so we were taking pictures of different things. Sometimes in night, when you take a picture of the um, night sky, the aura borealis shows up only in the camera and not to the naked eye. In this case, however, you can see the green glow uh, with the naked eye. The exposure here um, with uh, uh, star trails is 20 minutes. And um, one of the cool things about doing a night sky image that's 20 minutes long is you get to set the ISO, the um, sensitivity of the camera at its lowest setting of 100 ISO. And what that does over a 20 minute period is it gives you some really nice detail on the foreground of the image. Normally when you do a night sky picture, your shutter speed is about 30 seconds and the foregrounds are traditionally very dark and uh, if you do try to brighten them up, they're noisy and distorted and so forth. But with a 20 minute exposure, you get to suck in the light over a 20 minute period and then with a low ISO, it makes for some really sharp detail. Um, the detail on the inside of the lookout on this picture is really cool. So it's fun. The, when you take the night sky pictures as well on the long exposure, if you remember um, from, you know, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, how to find the North Star with the Big Dipper, that's what I did in this image. And uh, when you point the camera right at the North Star, you get the set of concentric circles, right? It's really cool. If you pointed the camera south, um, you would see the stars streaking in a curved and lateral fashion through the picture. But if you point right at the North Star, then there you go. So this was lucky in several ways. One, uh, that there was a position um, to the south of the lookout where I could stand and point north and then the northern light showed up at the same time. So it was pretty cool. I was pretty happy about this picture. And uh, lookout towers are just fantastic places to go if you can spend the night there. Oh my God, it's the coolest thing ever. So anyway, there's my picture. That's really cool. I didn't even know you could see the Aurora Borealis this far south. Um, it's, it's rare, you know, once in a while you can. Um, last week I got a picture of the Aurora Borealis with the comet. It just showed up. So um, it's, this was a pretty bright night for it. Um, I didn't Photoshop that green in there at all, I swear to God. Did not do it. Um, so it was bright that night. Yeah, that was something I was curious about is if anyone has gotten some cool pictures of the comet because it looks like any of those places would be cool places to capture it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those photos. Uh, the last question that I have is what are the major lessons that you've learned from being in the outdoors and um, practicing your photography? I can I go first say, as well. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, everybody probably has to find their own balance between patience and payoff. Like, how much time are you willing to spend in a place for, say, the light to change or for wildlife to appear, etc. cetera. Um, and also finding your balance between what you're willing to spend financially on equipment if anything, and you don't have to, <laughs> um, and how much weight and bulk you're willing to carry on the trail, like for five miles, for 10 miles, for 50 miles, for 500 miles, you're gonna have to carry everything you bring with you. So um, yeah, and when you're backpacking, every ounce counts, but if it's worth it to you, yeah, bring it. And just keep getting out there and taking more photos. The more you take, yeah, the better your odds of success and learning.
I can be next. So uh, for me, and like, I really like that question because uh, I even like wrote an article about that. I will post a link, what I have learned, like taking picture around the world. And I think the major takeaway from all that stuff for me, it's about focusing on what I'm doing, I mean like in general, because um, in the beginning I was so focusing on the external recognition, like I wanted to take the best of the best. Uh, and I spent a lot of time focusing on the photos and I totally forgot to enjoy what I'm doing. And I was thinking about like likes and competitions and all that stuff. And sometimes it's really hard because you can come, you can spend a lot of time hiking or going somewhere and you have just like a few minutes of this, like maybe like a little bit more like golden hour and it could be nothing. I mean, clouds could come and there is no really nice sunset or sunrise. And, and I was really upset in the beginning. I was really upset about that because I was thinking, okay, I spent a lot of time just trying to achieve that and I got nothing. And, and at one point of time, I even like burned out and, I didn't take a lot of pictures because I think like, why? Because like I spent a lot of time and I decided to just enjoy what I'm doing. And even like sometimes right now I could come in the place and just don't take pictures. Like I could spend time there and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, what I'm seeing or just staring at the nice nature. So I think these, was the most important takeaway from all my career. Just don't forget to enjoy what you're doing. I think it's really important. Um, <clears throat> the major lessons I've learned, oh gosh. You know, um, of course the first lesson is just to be an outdoor photographer. You just have to get outdoors all the time. You wouldn't think you had to say that very much to people, but you know, that's the big thing, right? There's always reasons and excuses why you can't get outside, but none of them are any good. Just get out there, you know, that's the thing. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, I'm still coming to grips with the idea that, well, of course, what I'm doing is I'm promoting the outdoors. I'm like marketing it, which results in more people out there, which just irritates me more sometimes <laughs> when I'm out there, right? So what I'm doing is, rather counterproductive to my own happiness. And so I'm sort of dealing with that, right? And sort of, you know, what I'm gonna do with my images in the future, where I'm gonna, you know, use them and so forth, right? Because it's it's a funny thing that we're doing, right? We're, we're promoting this beauty and this, this natural uh, wilderness and all this stuff, which results in more people visiting it, so on and so forth. So um, I would say that uh, the other lessons I've really learned are that, um, you know, when you're taking outdoor pictures, you just take what you like. I mean, it doesn't matter really what anyone else likes or what anyone else thinks about it. You know, it's just really what sets your soul on fire, right? Like, oh my God. Um, for me, the night sky pictures really do that. Um, anything with stars in it, so it's like, I just melt. But you know, um, there's so many beautiful places to go and there's so many ways you can capture cool images. And, and so I'd say that um, just persistence getting out there is really the main thing. Like I said before, it's not about the equipment. And then, um, you know, sharing your pictures broadly. There's different ways you can make money with the pictures. And, uh, you know, it's cool. It's cool to see your pictures printed somewhere and all that stuff. And, um, you know, you really have to get out there and just have a passion for it. And that's, those are the lessons I've learned. So it's a lot of fun sharing the pictures with uh, organizations that help protect the land. That's, that's a big thing. Yeah, that's really important. I, I completely agree. And I know that, yes, it can lead to more people on the trails, but that's that's really a good thing because the more people see how beautiful this land is and how Keep awesome it is myself. and are interested yeah. in getting out there, <laughs> they'll be more interested in protecting it too and yes. defending it and learning more about it. And 
that's that's what I take away. That's what I try to tell myself, and I think it's overall a good thing, <laughs> even though it's hard um, sometimes. You know, when you you're on a crowded trail, as long as everyone's respecting it and doing the right thing in terms of interacting with nature and wildlife, then I'm okay with sharing. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But yeah, we're good ambassadors, you know, just showing off the beauty of this place. <laughs> and I think Washington is big enough to, to handle plenty of hikers out there. There are still trails that aren't as heavily trafficked. There's enough room for all of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Washington Wild is a part of the Recreate Responsibly Coalition, um, which certainly now is is advocating for, you know, all of those, these things that we've talked about, about how to be safe and um, how to respect the, the land and, and the wildlife and all of that. Um, and it, it brings up the question that I think uh, Ben posed of how do you think your work and maybe photography in general contributes to the conservation movement? Well, there's no question that, you know, when you see a picture of a beautiful place and there's some text there about, you know, that we need to save it. I mean, the picture, the picture tells the story, right? It's like, oh my God, look how beautiful that is. So, I mean, the pictures play a huge role and, um, you know, anything having to do with conservation and um, I'm always, you know, it's always cool, right, to see uh, any of your images used for anything like that and um, yeah, so I'd say it's just a huge part of it and um, I'm sure that uh, Washington Wild and any other organization that does that is, you know, happy to have contributors, right, that give them pictures of stuff, so. All right, um, we have another question from Ray, and answer this one carefully. If you could recommend one location in Washington to photograph, which spot would it be? I can take the question. So I think I would recommend Fremont Lookout. It's, um, it's near sunrise uh, in the mountain Rainier National Park. So I think it's it's pretty like short hike, it's about one hour up, maybe a little bit more, but at the same time gives a lot of like possibilities to take cool pictures. You can take a sunrise, a sunset, you can take a night photo, you can spend all the time just walking around the lookout and taking some, something, something like that. So I think speaking of like investment, like your time investment and the result, I think for me, it's the best place. I recommend the enchantments as well, but it's a really long hike and not everyone is lucky to get the lottery ticket. So, so for me, it's definitely a Fremont Lookout. Yeah, Fremont Lookout's amazing, um, especially like in early to mid-August with all the lupins around sunrise. It's fantastic. Um, and I'm still working on getting lucky with that enchantments lottery permit. Someday it's going to happen. <laughs> I think I would recommend um, Sahali Arm. It's pretty amazing in the North Cascades. And uh, if you spend the night up at the top um, Sahali Glacier Camp, you can reserve it uh, in the backcountry. Um, and it's not very popular yet anyway. <laughs> there weren't a ton of people. There were plenty of plenty of room for walk-ins last year anyway, last July. But that's another one where you do have to pay for it. It is like 4,000 feet of elevation gain to get up there from the trailhead. Um, but it is worth every step. You get all kinds of views um, all along the way. You get your, your for once you come out of your forest, you get all of your alpine meadows, tons of wildflowers goats and marmots and black bears. Um, there's even an old mine up there. And if you head further up towards Tahikin, there's an old mine up there too, Horseshoe Basin. Uh, but if you just keep going right up the mountain, Sahali Mountain, there's a gorgeous lake down below with an island in it. And then you keep going up the mountain until you get to the top of the, um, well, the top of the trail, which is the camping area. All of the campsites are built out of rocks like rock uh, wind blockades. 
for the tents and they're quite effective. And um, yeah, the wind is definitely a factor up there. You camp at the foot of the glacier and wake up to sunrise. Yeah, you can see the sunset too and tons of mountain goats passing to and fro all morning. And yeah, we just wanted to stay up there forever. It was hard to come back down, but amazing and gorgeous. And it would be very easy to spend a lot of time up there with as much food as you could carry. <laughs> Well, Sahali Glacier Camp is definitely, I would say, the best campsite in the state of Washington. It's, um, it's a brutal hike to get up there. When you get up to like halfway up and then somebody points to where the camp is, like even higher up. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed like, No way, I'm not going <laughs> to go up there, right? So it's cool. Yeah. It's a really cool spot. I would say if I was going to recommend, you know, a general spot or area to people, I'd say um, the area known as Artist Point at the end of the Mount Baker Highway is so cool, right? You can drive your car there. It's, I don't know, 5,400 feet, I think. I mean, it's not open yet this year. I think it'll melt out. We'll see if it melts out. You can drive up now to the Bagley Lake Trailhead. Um, there's all sorts of trails that leave from there. Uh, there's the Lake Ann Trail. There's the um, Ptarmigan Ridge Trail. Um, there's a little picture lake that everybody takes a picture of Mount Shuxon from. So no matter what your fitness level is, or, you know, even if you want to just take grandma up for a walk, you know, drive up and uh, visit picture lake and drive up to, as far as you can to Artist Point and then find a trail to hike from there. There's some great overnights. Um, the Lake Ann Trail leaves from the um, North uh, the Mount Baker Highway right near there. It's not a long hike and you can camp near Lake Ann and have views of Mount Shuxon and so forth. So there's all sorts of cool stuff to do there. Uh, that's what I would say. It's a great road trip. If you know you have somebody from out of state come, you know, definitely drive them to Artist Point, man. It's cool because you got Mount Shuxon on one side, you got Mount Baker on the other side, and it's 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 sick. So I'd say that's where to go. But um man, there's so many other good places to go camp out on the coast. Um, one of the places I've been quite a bit is called uh Point of the Arches in Olympic National Park, the south side of Shai Shai Beach. Camped down there a dozen times or more. And it's closed now too due to the virus, right? The, the Indian reservation access is limited now. But man, what a place to camp. I would say go there too, because you can uh, uh, camp on the beach. You can have uh, driftwood fires and uh, oh my God, the sunsets there with all the sea stacks are just to die for. And that's a good place that you can like chill for a while and camp. Um, you know, and just relax, right? You know, in the wilderness on the beach and so forth. The, the Washington coast is just, you know, to die for in terms of camping. So those are my favorite spots. Yeah, awesome. the sea stacks are awesome out there. And yeah. in between the trailheads, if you can manage to get in that far, um, it's, it's really remote. You hardly see anyone else. So you get a lot of solitude. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for sharing those destinations. I think we have time for one more question. There's one in the chat that is maybe a little bit more on the technical side. So taking photographs during golden hour generally leads to positive results, but sometimes it's not always possible to be out there during those preferred times. Do you have any suggestions on how to best photograph landscapes in the middle of the day when the lighting may not be as ideal? I can, I can take this question. So, uh... I think I would suggest to play with long exposure and specifically with like really, really long exposure, like five minutes. And because you will freeze, so for example, like you will freeze, not like freeze, I mean, like blend all the clouds and water will be like just like a surface. And I think it's really nice because even like if you will transfer that photo to black and white even better because that photo will become not just about the light like golden hour and all this stuff but about the composition and some geometric probably so i think it's it makes sense just be conscious about movements because it should be something like a rock or buildings or something like that what couldn't be moved by wind, by the wind. 
because otherwise it will be just everything will be blurry. So at least one thing should be like pretty stable. Um, I would say uh, one of the things that you need to make sure of is that you have a circular polarizer for your lens when you're taking pictures outside. Not that that's going to necessarily answer your question, but um, the circular polarizer really gives you the ability to utilize any body of water, no matter how small, even just a small puddle or just a wet parking lot as a, a really cool um, aspect of your picture. So it's really important to have that on the lens when you're going to take pictures of outdoors, makes a big difference. And then, um, you know, when you're trying to take pictures and it's not in the golden hour, I would say to focus, um, just like you mentioned about the, the, the shapes and the, the lines, look for leading lines, uh, look for ways you can frame the picture and look for the contrast between the light and the shadow, right? Sometimes those bright lights, you know, we abhor them. We, we want the, the soft light at the end of the day, but sometimes those lights, um, the sharp light can be used to your benefit if you use the contrast and then look for leading lines and so forth. So that along with the, um, uh, the polarizer, um, look for any, any, any small body of water and see if you can, um, body of water puddle like anything with water and um, see if you can use the polarizer to get a reflection off that. Uh, makes a huge difference and uh, really helps you balance the landscape picture. That would be my advice. Yeah, I don't really have much to add to that. I just also really love those really sharp shadows in the middle of the day. They can be super dramatic, especially if it's in black and white. That can make for some really awesome dramatic mountainscapes. All right. Well, thank you all so much for sharing your stories and your tips and tricks in this panel today. Um, for anyone who's interested in submitting to our annual photo contest, which is going on right now, the deadline is August 14th. Um, and I will drop the photo contest details in the chat here one more time. You can also go to our website or to Washington Wild social media channels. Um, and again, we've got some, some cool prizes there, some from Ascent Outdoors, so definitely go and check those out. Um, so I think we can go ahead and close up now. I don't know if the, the live stream worked, but either way, I'll upload this recording so other folks can share it and continue to raise awareness about the importance of outdoor photography and conservation. All right. Well, thanks all and stay wild, take care, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks. Nice to meet you, Yevgeny and Alisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, nice you too. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs>